Hi, I'm MTG and welcome to another deck tech video. Uh, today is a bit different though. I'm kind of just doing it about a fun uh, Elden Ring themed deck that I built uh, because Elden Ring's like one of my favorite games. So I thought it'd be fun to make a commander deck just based on the theme because there are surprisingly like large amount of cards that fit the theme really well. Uh, but if you haven't had a chance to play Elden Ring and you're, you know, you really want to, just a heads up, there might be some spoilers in this just because of the references that I'll make for like certain bosses. Uh, but overall, if you have no idea what Elden Ring is, it's a game from so from Soft, and it's like from the if you ever play like Dark Souls and stuff, it's basically like a more modern version of that. Uh, but the whole point of it is you just do a ton of boss fights and. The lore is a bit obscure because part of, I think, the fun for people is like piecing together lore that you get from weapons and, you know, the very little cutscene dialogues that you get and other clues from like the environment of like really what's going on in, you know, in the story. Uh, but with that, I thought like the perfect representation for the commander with this is Go Shintai of Life's Origin because. I wanted to do a little bit of a shrine like tribal with this because in some levels I do want this to at least maybe keep up with some mid power decks. It's probably more suited for like low power, but Goshintai is just a really powerful commander in of itself. So um like the other piece of like how this fits in, I think flavor wise is one. Um when you're playing the game, there's just like a ton of open world map stuff that you can do. And so in that, when you're exploring, it's really easy to come across like a cave or a catacomb that has like some sort of boss fight in it where you get some really cool loot or different weapons and stuff like that. So I just thought like shrines would do a really good job of kind of representing like the dungeons and the caves and the catacombs that you explore to then unlock just really cool stuff and I don't know, do, do cool fighty things. But yeah, go Shintai, I was like, okay, the other cool piece of this is um, the fact that <laughs> you have like a recursion element to it with a lot of the like pieces of the game flavor wise, like there's a lot of dying in the game. Like it's a hard game and it's easy to die to a boss like 20 times before you finally learn the attack patterns and get it down. And so with Go Shintai, I think like the fact that you can return a target creature enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield just kind of plays into the overall flavor of things. But it's also a five color commander, which I think is kind of needed for just being able to pull from different cards that have like really good representation of the game itself. So between the recursion that I think is on theme and the five colors, I was like, Goshen Tai is perfect. Uh, and then for the game, I'm only on my second character now, which is like a mage build. But the first character I did was a confessor. And I tried to lean into kind of like almost like a paladin, like holy dexterity type build with it. And so I feel like Gen Arcanium Weaver is such a good card to like represent my character because it's a uh, red, white, and black. And so the colors for that, I think really encompass like what my character is all about because uh, the red piece of it, what kind of made my character and my build actually work out because the first part of the game was super, super rough for me, um, was Blasphemous Blade, which is this giant sword that like, on its a uh, like kind of special magical attack that it does it sends this like blast of fire down um and it can do a lot of damage and it scales with holy and it in dexterity so that was perfect for my character but it literally just sends like a wave of fire and when it hits it does damage uh then you heal a little bit so i feel like that kind of played into like the the paladin like white part of i think gen because it's like healing and holy stuff. And then the thing that I think that works for like the black identity in this as well is the recursion aspect. Because like black and is always about like, they're not always, but you're, you're a huge part of like how that color works is you have stuff like living death or Malika rebirth where you're able to like bring things back after they die. 
So I just thought like that really represented like your character dying and coming back. And then it also just has like a built in like recursion thing for it as well, which is sacrifice an enchantment, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And I think Gen just kind of looks like they would be a paladin character in a game like this too. So it's just a lot of pieces of that that I just thought like really kind of laid out the, um, the theme and the flavor. Part of the mechanics for the game is you have something called runes. And runes you can use for like currency or leveling up. Uh, but magic also has runes from, you know, Kaldheim. And so one rune that I thought fit absolutely perfectly was Rune of Mortality. And so it's a black sword on the art, right? And it lets you draw a card and then it gives you death touch. And so what I thought was like really interesting about this is one, it could represent like the runes currency in games, but it reminds me of Malekith the Black Blade, like because the Black Blade had death sealed in it. And so I was thinking like this just kind of fits like across like you know a lot of the the flavor for that because again the image in this is a black blade but Malekith the black blade was like the the name of one of the characters so I just thought like that could almost represent his sword in the game um and then another thing too about the game is like when you die and you die again before you can pick up your runes you lose all your runes so if you had a lot of runes that you needed to level up and you lost them then they're gone and you have to start over again which kind of adds to like the high stakes value of the game making it kind of I don't know interesting because it can be really stressful but then you're just like you know when it happens it's like I guess slightly demoralizing but then you're like whatever you eventually learn to kind of like detach a bit more from like your runes and losing them kind of ish so I still get like worried about it even though I'm like I've played this game enough now I should be okay if I lose too many but it was funny because when I was doing um a new game plus with my confessor I thought like you couldn't level up anymore and so I was like oh I have like a million runes and then <laughs> I like realized you could and I had lost like about a million runes just because like I let my character die two times without like trying to go back and pick up those runes. So I was like, oops, I guess you can level up. My bad. Something else too with, again, I've brought this up a few times is with recursion within the game is like a pretty big piece of it because you die to a lot of different boss fights or in my case being stupid and thinking the view is really pretty and accidentally walking off a cliff. Uh, but uh, I think this uh, like, card Erebos God of the Dead is just so perfect because again it's just having something that literally represents like the death because death is essentially sealed away so nothing's like really truly dying in the game and um with like the God of Dead it also adds like this other kind of aspect of like um like when you fight your opponents too and you like die but you can keep coming back to life as many times as you want. But they only have one chance because it's a game. So you can just pretty much like kill them in the game and then you don't have to deal with that boss anymore. But then um, like for you, you're going to always be coming back. It's not like a permadeath situation. So I just thought that was kind of like a little funny flavor mechanic piece of this is like your opponents can't gain life to that as well. I thought just kind of matched that like mechanic a bit. And then this other piece too is brilliant restoration so there's grace points where you save and you can heal up and you do all these other things and like basically like are related towards like this theme of like when you die it's like a checkpoint that you can go back to and so i think that with brilliant restoration because you're returning all artifacts and enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield that that kind of makes me think of like when you die you go back to the last grace point and so like that's kind of what that reminded me of there and then in the game you have uh these like people that are supposed to be your guides that are called maidens and so one maiden that I think is like really uh, or a card that I thought represented like your maiden really well is idyllic tutor because and I might be mixing her name up because there's like five different characters with like really similar names but I believe it's Melina who's your maiden in the beginning and um 
when you like come back and like the first cut scene like after you if like if he died in like your very first boss fight uh which most people do because it's like part of the story and you have to be like crazy good at the game to just live through that because it's like way higher level than your first starting uh character is but you have this point where like millennia like reaches her hand out to your character and like basically helps them like up and one of the theories is that millennia is actually like the daughter of a god and um so I just thought that would be like really interesting. It's like idyllic tutor kind of matches like the godly aspect of it, but then also like the hand reaching out, I thought like really represented like that cutscene in the beginning. And then Enchantress Presence is like Melina is like always around you basically because she's like guiding you. But if you sit at grace points, there's periods where you can like talk to her and stuff, and she's supposed to just like help you in your journey to become the Elden Lord. And so I thought like Enchantress Presence kind of like encompassed that like she's always with you kind of guiding you perspective and then the other piece of this too is when you're playing the game you're like piecing together clues and figuring out where to go and what weapons and stuff work for you and what like I don't know there's just so much to explore because it's really beautiful and there's just like catacombs everywhere I thought um two cards like really represented the idea of exploration but then trying to learn the storytelling pieces especially from like your environment based on like what ruins look like what the statues are like what are some engravings and like some of the graveyards and stuff so nature's lore um one it's a good ramp card but I just again thought it was like a cool way to represent like hey, this is, like, you trying to piece together stuff from your, like, environment and what's going on in the lore of Elden Ring. And then Farseek, because, uh, again, you're just wanting to explore every little piece of the map and figure out, like, where things are and if you've explored certain dungeons or if you need to go, like, get a specific weapon for your build. So I just thought that was, like, a fun little flavor piece to add in. And then if you go, you can get there early in the game and there's some pretty scary music. Like it's very stressful music, at least for me. Uh, it's called Kaled and um, it's tainted by this, like, I don't know if poison's the right word, but it's this thing called rot and it does a ton of damage to you. And the damage kind of acts like poison damage, but if you're taking like double poison damage, essentially, uh, so it can just kill you really quickly, but it tainted like basically the whole area of Kaled and how that happened was Millennia, who's this crazy hard boss, uh, was fighting another boss that you fight later in the game uh, called Ragadon. And in her fight to try to like basically beat him, she had to basically go into like her goddess like rot form and like cursed him essentially with rot and so Ragadon's like from the inside out basically dying from rot but in that fight it also like tainted all of Kaled so there's like these pieces of earth where like in Vergoth Bloody Sky Sire's art that looks very similar because it's just like almost like a barnacle looking thing but it just like grows out of the ground and it just like the whole area is just full of like these like weirdly diseased mutated like creatures and like things that can poison you with rot and then just like the trees and land itself is just kind of like turning into something else that's like really weird and otherworldly and then there's other pieces of this too where um you find different people throughout the game that kind of teach you spells and their NPCs, they have like side quests as well. And all of them are pretty sad. Pretty but that's Elden Ring for you. But one of them is a uh, Thops. He is someone that you find like after you beat Mark up in uh Godfrey in the castle and you like go out basically into like the second part of like the main map area and um there's like a church where you find this like sad maid she's like oh I got kicked out of like um uh my academy where I was learning magic and like I had like my life's work and you can find a key to help him get back to the academy so he can continue his research uh and then 
basically when you go to like visit him there after you gave him the key you find that he died and then you get like basically what his life work was but like even just the art and like Vistic study uh I thought like really represented that kind of whole quest and scenario because uh in Vistic study it just kind of looks like they're a mage like studying a book and like trying to figure out like magic and stuff like that but even just the way like the lighting on the desk and stuff kind of matches like where Thops was like when he died and you find his body and then another card that I thought like represented like learning sorcery and stuff was like Selen is like your tutor and she calls you her apprentice all the time and she teaches you um some pretty decent spells like early on in the game but doing her quest line, like, you get one of the more powerful spells as well for, your, like, if you're doing, like, a mage class build. And so I just thought, like, Mystical Tutor just really, like, represented and even kind of looks a little bit like her cellar that she had where she's just got, like, all these books and, like, looks like little kind of, like, experimenty things in the background. This card, Demonic Tutor, the artwork for it with, like, Liliana kind of reminds me of uh the bestial sanctum when you get to the bestial sanctum it's like this area out in the Kalid wilds and there's these uh bestial clerks that kind of look like bear dog wolf things and they have like robes over the top of their body and there's one that if you give uh like this death root to and you give enough of them it'll give you like spells in return so i kind of saw like that being like your demonic tutor almost because another spoiler is the bestial sanctum cleric that like you learn from is Malekith who is actually the one that has like the death like seal in his sword so I just thought that like might be a cool representation there and then again throughout the game you find really cool weapons and loot so I wanted to represent that with stuff like um, like Ember Cleave, I thought really represents Blasphemous uh, Blade because it's like fire, like is the type of attack that it does. But then Ember Cleave is like also like fire type, mountain type. And then uh, just based on like how explosive the damage can be because of the flash where you can catch people off guard. And then giving a creature like Double Strike and Trample, I think just feeds again into the theme of like Blasphemous Blade because Blasphemous Blade can output so much damage and you can really catch people off guard with it but uh just like the the trample aspect of it too because the fire wave like kind of just goes in like a channel down and then it can hit multiple enemies like in just like this wave and so that's kind of figured of like trampling through all the minions to still hit like the boss if there's like other little guys running around while you're fighting them um and then lightning greaves because there's a lot of different armor types, but you find like literal greaves. So I was just like, that's too perfect not to put it. Uh, and then, yeah, so there's two shrines I thought like really, really looked super similar to um, like stuff that's in Elden Ring. So one of them is a Sanctum of Stone Fangs. It just kind of looks like some of the catacombs that you come across. And then Goshen Tai of Ancient Wars. Reminds me of like when you get to the mountaintop area of like just where for one it's got like kind of the fire um coming out of the shrine there and that's where you go to like the mountaintop to get like you fight the fire giant up there so I just thought like in a few ways that just one look like kind of some of the dungeons that you'd come across but also there's the fire element to it that matches like that maps theme a bit and then something else that's like a reoccurring theme a lot in the game is, and I'm not as first with the lore on this piece of it, but I don't know if they technically worship the moon, but they like follow the moon essentially and the stars. And like Renala um, has like her own moon and there's like all of her followers from like the Academy of Raya Luc Luc Lucaria. Uh, where there's all these like mages that uh, study the stars and follow like again the moon and then uh, Rani who has like her own moon and that's all related to like the mage essentially and then there's in Nakron internal which is like this underground city where you can get like your mimic ash and stuff um, 
I think from again what I watched in the video and again a lot of people just have like theories on lore but from what it looks like at least like Nakron had like some sort of affiliation with like the stars and the moon I don't know if they were like worshiping them or not but there's like a heavy tie between like their magic and their like beliefs and then the stars so I felt like Moonbless Cleric kind of like captured that like aspect of like maybe this group of people that like just researches or worships the stars and the moon and they're kind of like counter to the golden order because the golden order like everyone wants you to like follow the golden order and like the the erd tree and everyone gets reunited with the erd tree and stuff but the like moon people essentially like don't follow that at all uh and then now for kind of the fun fun pieces here is like the boss representation so there's like opposition agent uh that i thought like represented invaders super well because when uh especially when the game was like still newer you'd be like on your way to like through a dungeon or to like a boss fight and then you'd get invaded and if you beat that invader a lot of times you just ended up using a lot of like your resources like your potions and stuff which makes like the boss fight even harder so i thought opposition agent like really represented that because you shut down people from tutoring and it's just super obnoxious if it happens to you because you're like no uh so i just thought like the invader like was perfectly represented by opposition agent um and then i think like as far as like dungeon bosses go, you come across these things that are earth tree burial like watchdogs that are like these stone statue things um, that like kind of look like a cat and a dog. And so I thought ancient stone idol like was a really good representation of that, especially too because like you fight like pretty much both the dog and the cat version. Like when you get to harder parts of the game, like as you progress through the game and there's harder boss fights, you pretty much fight two of those at the same time. And so when Ancient Stone Idol dies, you create a 612 colorless construct artifact creature with Trample, which I thought kind of represented like the fact that you are essentially fighting like two bosses at the same time. So like you beat one, but you still have to get through the other. Uh, and then there's this other thing early in the game that you can get to to kind of farm runes and like a lot of runes to help you level up really early in the game. It's a uh, this dragon that is in the Kaled and like the rot is kind of like I don't know if consuming them is the right way but it looks like it's dying and then there's just like tiny little dragons or they're not tiny they're huge compared to you but tiny compared to that dragon that are like kind of protecting it almost and if you go towards like the back end of the dragon you can like attack it and it won't bring the other ones that are supposed to be protecting it to you so if you do that early in the game it takes a while because you don't do very much damage but you can potentially get like a hundred thousand runes and level up your character a ton so i thought uh ao of the dawn sky is like a perfect representation for this because when it dies you benefit and it kind of looks like the dragon too that you like kill so especially like the piece like when AO uh, dies, you put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent you control, which I think is just like a perfect representation of like just farming a ton of runes and like leveling up really quickly. So another thing in the game that you can get to quite early, which don't recommend because it's a very difficult area. It's called So So Soyo Soyofra, probably pronouncing that wrong. River. Uh, there are like these ancestor spirits underground. And you have to like fight your way through a lot of them, get to these pillars that you light. And if you light all the pillars, there's like this elk boss that's really, it's a really pretty fight. Um, and the music is gorgeous for it. But the boss pretty much looks like exactly like Jengatha. And it's even like an elk. And so it's just, I thought that was like so perfect flavor wise. And this one could also be considered a bit of a stretch, but I thought Goldspan Dragon just the way it like lays on whatever this arch is in the art looks a lot like a magma worm and with like magma worms you get a pretty decent amount of runes when you kill one and like a decent sword if you're using like the big swords um so i just thought like it kind of represented the way like it's just one look but also like uh gold spans like mountains so like fire type and then 
the magma worm like spits out magma and like I don't know just shoots stuff at you so it kind of I thought like matched flavor wise for that I didn't I don't have any like other ideas of what could represent a magma worm so if you have any suggestions I would love to hear them but I think Goldspan Dragon for now will be like my magma worm uh but then the ones too that I was like I think these were like the hardest bosses for me because at least with my first character just because I didn't know how to get really past like their armor very well and their attacks were really hard to dodge um but crucible knights and I could be wrong on the lore but I believe the lore is that they were of like the old tree so there was a tree before the one that like is for the golden order um and the theory and I don't know if this is still a popular theory but the Erd tree um that's like the golden one basically took over like what the old tree was and is almost like a parasite to it but like basically that one belonged to like the old god that basically used to rule over the land and then the golden order god like took over and so the crucible knights are from like the old god like era and their armor is made out of like wood and um so i thought the cavalier of thorns was like a perfect representation of crucible knights one because crucible knights are i think some of the hardest freaking npcs to fight in the game but um like cavalier of thorns just kind of match like the flavor of like them still kind of worshiping like the old god and like their old armor and stuff and then they also just have like some kind of dragon characteristics so like the horn on the cavalier of thorn like knight in this art i thought just kind of like matched that perspective as well and then uh cavalier of night i thought really represented the night cavalry in the game which are these like really scary giant like knights that will appear on the road at like certain times in the game believe it or not they are there at night time but you do have to like go to some spots and like sit at a grace point wait until night and then go fight them and they have some pretty cool like magic and weapon drops and stuff so cavalier of night like almost the same exact name as some of the you know night cavalier so it's just was like that was too perfect not to put in uh, and then there's also tree sentinels which in the very beginning of the game it's like this huge like knight in golden armor that's on this horse and you pretty much have to sneak past them because you are nowhere near close to being strong enough to fight them yet unless you're like one of those people just are like a god at this game but i thought a uh, pentric paladin just really represented those because of one the color type being kind of like i think like the golden order makes me think of like planes because it's just like they think they're like pure and like light and holy is kind of like associated with them um and then throughout the game too you kind of run into these things they're really scary at first and um they're called the black knight assassins and i thought dothy voidwalker looks exactly like a black knight assassin even has like the dagger up and like the cloak that matches really perfectly but you can get access to the boss as like and use that as like one of your summons to help you fight the boss but you actually have to work really hard to earn access to it because you go into an evergale which is this like smaller area where you fight something 1v1 so you can't use like your summons you can't summon a friend to help you fight it it's just you fighting it and so you really have to like earn that summon and i think it's like more powerful than the mimic personally um avenger zendikar i thought looked pretty much exactly like the erd tree avatar and so the erd tree avatars are by all like the minor uh erd trees and they're like these smaller golden like they basically look exactly like the giant one in the game and they usually have like resources or something around them that's like worth exploring but they're all protected by these earth tree avatars that also have tiny little like minions that also help protect uh the tree so i thought like zendikar was perfect because when it enters the battlefield you make those little plant tokens but then it also just looks like the earth tree uh, avatar so i was just like this is so perfect flavor wise and then to the other fun part of this is game bosses. So I think Margaret is represented by Vishkal Blood Arbiter. 
mainly because he's kind of like the protector of the throne, essentially, where he tries to stop you a few times in your journey. And the first time you come across him, especially when the game first dropped, like Margaret, everyone was like, oh my god, this is such a hard boss, what the heck? Uh, but you actually come across this character multiple times in the game, and each time, like, he's stronger and stronger. So I think, like, Vishkel kind of fits that, because if you sacrifice a creature, you can put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the sacrificed creature's power. So I think that just kind of does a good job at, like, representing, like, the difficulty level increasing as you come across this boss multiple times but then like how he's just sitting on like the stone throne by himself kind of makes me think of like when you first fight him uh in the castle like the Stormvale castle so in like that period of like isolation but also like when you get back to the the, the Erd tree and you're trying to get in it to like fight uh Malekith or what's her name Marika Sorry, I got that wrong at first. Uh, that he's there's also like that kind of feeling like he's waiting in the throne room to fight you kind of vibe. So I just feel like that card art and like even the color matching of it works really well because he does holy attacks and then he's also died a lot. Of it. So like that kind of like black recursion aspect of things. Um, and then Inferno Titan I thought represented the Fire Mountain Giant really well. It's pretty self-explanatory i think it's just this fire giant that you have to fight in the mountains uh to get basically the fire to burn down the the tree so that you can get in and fight marika the god that's sealed inside the tree um and then this card i was like i have to find something to represent her um uh, so melina blade of nikela she's like the god of rot and the hardest boss by far in the game to fight and you might have seen like the let me solo her memes but like wow <laughs> i needed help i needed help from people i never got let me solo her to help but there were thankfully a lot of other people who were good at the game that finally helped me beat her but the thing that i think like really represented um melina is a G gisela blade of good night because she does like um double the damage and then also like halves damage um so i think like the double damage part like really encompasses like how she could basically like one shot you if you're not like high enough vigor or you just can't read her like attacks very well um i just thought like that piece of it like really matched flavor wise but then also just the card art itself like there's wings which i think kind of match when she turns into her second form as the god of rot and has like those like kind of butterfly rot wings that were really cool and then um her swords in this as well but also just the coloring like the crimson like gold white like that just matches i think so perfectly like when you're fighting her because she has those like butterflies and like flower looking things that are like part of her wings that i think are just like really really pretty um horrible boss to fight but really pretty game design overall honestly um and then the other card too that i wanted to have like a good reference of is uh queen marika the eternal and so it's not entirely sure like if she's two people or one person but um regardless she's like sealed inside the a tree and just part of a boss fight that you fight so i just thought essica god of the tree like matched that perfectly especially like the flip side of her the prismatic bridge where i think like the elden beast fight like i think kind of has like some sort of like semblance there because of just like this the symbolism i think of what the beast is and then like what like prismatic like bridges and stuff so i don't know but I thought that was like a cool thing because like Eska is the god of tree and then there's the god that's sealed in the tree. Yeah, sorry if this was a bit long, but I just thought it'd be fun to like kind of break down the, the overall theme of stuff and like, I don't know, I love Elden Ring. I would love to know like what you think would be really cool cards to add as well or if you think there's some cards that would be better flavor, let me know. Again, the goal for this was to try to make it somewhat able to hang out in mid-power, but if it doesn't at the end of the day, I won't be bummed out by that either. But thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Bye.